post-production meeting for Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. So, uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm the scenic designer. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm the lighting designer. Hi, I'm the costume designer. Alright, well, now that we've introduced ourselves, uh, we can get right to this. All right, I'm gonna sit down. Hello, and welcome to my production meeting for my production of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. This is a show I have been a fan of ever since I first discovered it in 2017. And now I have the chance to do the show because the rights have been released, finally. Now I certainly don't have the skills or capacity to take on this entire project on my own. But I did and I had to. So without further ado, let's get this meeting going. Before we get into the designer's work, I want to look into why we're doing this show today and a little bit behind the concept for this production of it. The story of Great Comet is ultimately a story of human survival. The characters exist in a world that is facing impending destruction in the wake of a massive war. There is so much horror outside their doors and yet they dance, sing, and drink into the night. The characters are in constant search of how to cover up their own fears about the world. Natasha fears Andre may die in the war, leaving her to die alone, and Pierre fears he has wasted his entire life. These fears are what lead Natasha to fall for Anatole and Pierre to drink and read. What makes these stories so important is how they reflect how we all manage during these times that are dark. We all need an escape during difficult times. Great Comet offers that and the hope that, though the world may be dark, if you learn to hold on to hope as a guiding force for your life, you may find peace. Because of these important themes, I believe this show could be performed in any decade. There are very few times in history when there won't be something awful happening out there. Therefore, I want this production to reflect our modern society by treating itself as if it was created as a pop-up show. All the actors should look like anyone else coming to the theater, and the space should be welcoming and familiar to the audience. It should appear as if friends and family put together this production to tell a story for their friends and family. So that's a basic overview about what we're doing with this production, but now I'm going to pass it over to the set designer. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm scenic designer. So since we're try aiming to create an atmosphere that is familiar and comfortable, it felt right to not alter the entire space, uh, like in the original productions. Also, moving the seats would be a hassle that I'm not prepared to deal with. <laughs> Plus, we'd be sacrificing seating space. Instead, we're opting for something that leans toward the altered space feel while still maintaining the core structure of the theater. Something I consider to be the epitome of modern uh, is a modern bar countertop. Therefore, I've placed a bar upstage this will be where Pierre spends the majority of his time. He can help serve people along with the pianist or conductor who will be back there conducting the band playing in the back. We'll have curtains on the sides that allow for exits and entrances whenever necessary. And on stage we'll have two round tables. These tables will be light enough to be moved with the help of at least four people. However, they will more than likely stay put for the majority of the show. There are 12 seats which allow for all nine characters plus any ensemble members we have. So that's about all I have. Um, that's it. Now let's pass it on to our costume designer. This is my first time costume designing, so please go easy on me. <laughs> anyway, I loved the thought of keeping with our modern times, and I feel like this is a show that, um, while it, it's very much set in a very specific time period, being 1812, uh, it, its story goes beyond that. It can be done really any time. And so, in keeping with that, I wanted to make sure that while these are Russian characters, that they still look and feel like they're uh, people that could have come from our own 
families. I basically want these costumes to reflect the level of comfort we have in our modern style. And so while these are very um, Russian uh, 1812s characters, I want to reflect that level of comfort that we have in our own styles. So this is where I came up with some different potential looks for a few of the characters. So here are a few examples. Pierre, I wanted to have a very classy bartender look. He has inherited a lot of wealth, so he would dress with a little bit more class. <laughs> Despite this, he is a very humble man, so I don't want him looking very much more dressed up than is appropriate for the classy bar he's at. For Natasha, I'm sticking to a lot of white outfits to represent her innocence. Uh, all of her outfits are also a balance between comfort and glamour. When she goes to the ball, it's almost as if she pulls out her prom dress, <laughs> whereas when she's alone in the Sonia, uh, she has pajamas. Anatole is hot, or at least that's what they say in the prologue, <laughs> so I aim for the most obnoxious outfits that still maintain their familiar feel. I considered giving him absurd fashion choices, I feel like it would take away from how grounded the show is as a whole uh, for our production of it. And so while I'd love to go all the way out, have him like decked out with feathers and glitter and stuff, I felt like I wanted to still make it look like as if these people went to their closets and pulled out what they felt best fit these characters. And so those are just a couple of the renderings. I don't want to go all out because one, this is my first time, but also um, this just gives you a little taste about what I'm really looking for. But other than that, that's all I got for myself. All right, thank you, costume designer. Uh, so now we're gonna pass it on, finally, to our lighting designer. Take it away, me. Oh, it's already me? Okay. Uh, one of the things we are planning on doing is having a bunch of lights hanging about the space. Not like string lights, kind of like we did way back when we did Pippin, uh, but more just scattered about the space. More in line with how the, the original Great Comet Productions did. And this is something I feel like was important to hold on to because it creates a connection between the audience and the people on stage. Having these lights above you, uh, all around the spaces, feels so much more welcoming uh, when you see those same lights on stage. I like the, the more traditional kind of bulbs, but also I love these fixtures that almost look like they have like Saturn's rings on them or something. Otherwise, uh, I plan on making the lights uh, very much stick to the bar look. Uh, all the lights will be more practical in the sense of they are going to use as little moving lights as possible. Um, the only time the movie lights would happen is it would be uh, when the music gets really exciting. Parts like the duel. Uh, but other than that, I want to keep very much in line with the traditional fixtures. Fixtures that, even though like you know bars don't have source fours in them, to believe that if they had source fours, how those would be used like how we're going to have a character come center stage and get a spotlight for themselves. That could be a consistent thing when Natasha sings no one else. We're also planning on putting LED tape around the bar so it will have a nice little glow underneath. But yeah, that's an area I feel passionate about because it also creates that more modern aesthetic to it. But so that's all I have for myself. Uh, I know it wasn't a lot to show because obviously lighting designers, we can't really show anything uh, besides what our dreams are. So that's all I got for me. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lighting Designer. Those are certainly some bright ideas. <laughs> well, anyway, so that's all our design presentations and concept uh, presentations. So now we can get to discussing um, the rehearsal schedules. Is it filming? Yeah, filming. Hello. Uh, so what's this? What's the different setting all of a sudden? Why is he wearing the Lighting Designer sweater? also known as the Academia sweater, which I wear all the time. Originally, I had a, a certain plan for how this video was going to end, and I followed through with that plan. Originally, I had um, used the different characters of me, and at a point, we get into a little argument of sorts, and it's a little silly, but it's also... I was trying to find a way to like wrap this whole thing up into some sort of message or something. Uh, you can take a look at it right here. And how long before the whole world forgets about the Great Comet, just like Broadway did all those years ago? I didn't even know what this show was before I came to this meeting. <laughs> well, that's because you didn't exist. What? If you want to see the whole thing, you can reach out to me and I'll show you the whole thing. Uh, it's ridiculous, it's dumb, um, <laughs> but I kind of love it. I decided to cut it out for the rest of this project. But why, Matt? I'm glad you asked. 
I spent a long time really trying to figure out how to end this video, this whole project really. I, I knew I wanted to make a concept for Great Comet and work on all the different areas and stuff and make that happen, but I didn't really know what format that would come in and I ended up deciding on this concept of me being different roles. Which was really fun, but then I was also thinking maybe I can find something more to do with this. I came to this position where I wasn't sure if that's really what I wanted and also if that was the right thing for the project. And ultimately I just, I realized that my decision to do this sketch at the end was really it really stemmed from my lack of confidence in my work. I was making it as sort of a excuse for the rest of the work I had done on creating a concept, to just to end it in a very silly way to make you not take it so seriously. And so I ultimately decided to cut that whole video. Again, if you want to see the rest of it, let me know, and I'll send those bits to you. The reason I feel like it was important for me to cut it is because my lack of confidence shouldn't stop me from being proud of my work. And that is something that Furman has taught me. Furman has given me so much confidence over the past five years. I went into Furman thinking I was going to be stuck with bio, and then I was like, okay, maybe I'll try theater. End up deciding that's the path I wanted to go to. I have no idea what I was going to do. As I went along, I started building more and more to my skill set. And looking back, it's amazing to see where I've come. Furman gave me the confidence to believe that I could do my own solo show and to direct a original show written by one of my best friends. That's something that I've been we've been talking about for years. Uh, and Furman gave me that confidence. I think it's important for me to honor that with this project. Though the work I did on this show is definitely a lot less than I would like to put into the show, I think I should always be proud of what I do and not let a little silly sketch get in the way of that. I will say though, one area of my lack of confidence that is valid is that I have no confidence in my ability to do all of this show on my own. C collaboration is something that is so important to theater and Furman has taught me that time and time again. I couldn't be more grateful for the people I got to work with. These people helped me discover my path. I'm just really thankful to everybody involved with Furman. The professors, the students, the non-majors and majors alike. I'm so grateful to all of you and hopefully if this production does eventually happen, we can work together and make it happen. Because I would absolutely love that. I don't know if I actually am going to get to work on Great Comet anytime soon, especially now, but I do know that Furman's given me the tools and the capacity to be able to actually achieve that eventually. Um, and so I'm very grateful, and that's just how I want to end this. So no fireworks or anything here, but I'm just very grateful for the experiences I got at Furman, and the confidence they've given me to feel like I can at least even attempt to create a full sh concept for the Great Comet of 1812. So, thank you very much, and happy quarantine. <laughs>